Hello, today let's walk through my peach cobbler pound cake. Here's the ingredients that we're going to need and it will be listed in the description. So first, we have two cans of peaches, and these are chunked pe peaches and heavy syrup. We just want to drain those cans completely um, and save, of course, the juice. So uh, drain completely two cans of diced peaches. Put that to the side. And now we want to start with our, our peach mixture. So you're going to need a half a stick of butter, melted. And to that melted butter, you want to add in a full can of the peaches that, that have been drained and then a half of the other can of peaches. Don't worry, we will use the other half of peaches later. You also want to add in uh, one cup of brown sugar. It can be light brown or dark brown. Um, I just happen to have dark brown on hand, so this is uh, one cup of dark brown sugar. And you also want to add in a couple of shakes of nutmeg, not a whole lot, just a little bit, and then about a teaspoon of cinnamon. I also added in a drop of caramel emulsion just, just to change up the flavor. You don't have to add the caramel emulsion, but it just adds a nice little touch. And then of course you also want to add about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon, sorry, of vanilla flavoring. Give that a really good stir. You're just wanting to make sure that the butter and the brown sugar just basically coat all of the peaches and that you're evenly distributing your seasonings as well. So a good stir here is great. All right, we'll put that to the side while we prepare our bunt pan. Uh, this is my Nordic 18 cup bunt pan in my Pam Easy Release Baking Spray or Perfect Release. Um, spraying the sides really, really good. Um, and then, of course, that middle column you want to spray really well. And then a light dusting on the bottom um, as well. All right, um, so that peach mixture that you just made, we're gonna put that all in the bottom of your bun pan. Make sure you scrape out all of the, the syrup that's in there. You, you will want all of that. All right, and you just wanna make sure it's evenly on the bottom no big deal. And put that aside for later. Now we're going to get started with um, a brown sugar mixture that you're going to layer in the peach um, bun pan. Not now, but later. So it's just a cup of um, brown sugar, some cinnamon, it's probably about a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I like using, for the middle of these um, cakes, Smart Balance, uh, which I think it's like a margarine or a spread. You're just going to have to trust me. It, it works better than using butter, um, so I use this Smart Balance. This is the same mixture that I use when I do my Honey Bun Pound Cakes as well, um, and it just gives me good results, so that's why I, I use that. Uh, so this is going to be three tablespoons of Smart Balance.
All right, in goes the three tablespoons. And then we just wanna do our best to get it mixed up. It may take a little while, so I apologize if this part of the video is a little slow, um, but you really just wanted to get it all um, mixed together until it forms uh, like a, a crumbly paste. So it's really about just working it in. It's um, a mixture of, of stirring and chopping and mashing, uh, just to, like I said, to get that um, spread mixed in with the brown sugar and the other ingredients. And when you're done, it's gonna be you know slightly clumpy, um, but you should see that all the brown sugar has some type of spread on it when you're done, so. Here we go. We'll put that aside for later. I want to go ahead and get started on our cake mixture. Uh, so for this cake mixture, we're going to use two sticks of butter that are softened at room temperature. You also want to use a half cup of oil. I know some of you are cringing, but you're going to have to trust the process on this one. So a half cup of um, vegetable oil. We're going to get that on our mixer and start creaming those together. Start your mixer off on low because with the oil in there, it may start splashing all over. So um, start on low and then you can uh, take up the speed just a little bit in order to get those creamed. So we're about to add our sugar to the mixture, and this is, I believe, three cups of sugar. It's just um, slowly adding it in. I turned my mixture down, my mixer down to low, so I can add my sugar. Three cups of sugar going in, and once that's all in, then we'll turn the mixture, the mixer, <laughs> back up to a higher speed so that that can cream. You see right now it's a dark yellow um, and it's, it's you know, uh, not a lot in there, but um, as this gets mixed for about five minutes, that's why I just push it off to the side, um, you'll see that it turns a nice fluffy light yellow, at least doubled in size. So this is our flour mixture, which is the flour, the baking soda, sorry, baking powder, baking powder, and salt. I'm going to sift those together. I believe that was three cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt. But like I said, in the description, you will find the exact measurements. Just tapping down my sifter, making sure all the ingredients get down in there and off the sides. All right, I'll toss that a little bit. All right, so that's our flour mixture all done. I did get flour everywhere, so I'm giving it a little wipe down on my counter. Let's pull our mixture back in the frame. You can already see it's way lighter, so the whole lot lighter right now, and it's getting very fluffy. You see how light and fluffy that that creaming has already gone um, with our, our batter our batter base here. Uh, that's why I said that oil really uh, does a lot. It does good for the batter. It's going to 
uh, make it nice and fluffy and it's also going to keep it very moist um, and, and make it a really nice crumb as well. So I just scraped down my bowl to make sure it's all incorporated. And we're going to get ready to add the next ingredients. So um, on low, we're about to add in our eggs one at a time. Um, as soon as one egg yolk is done, then you're going to go ahead and add in the next one. Uh, like I've always said before, once you get your eggs in your mixture, in your batter mixture, you don't want to overbeat at that point. This was five eggs in this mixture. Got our mixer on its lowest setting. And then like I said, as soon as you see one egg yolk gone, put the next one in. Um, that is a little bit of butter emulsion. Pretty much the end of my bottle there is probably about a half teaspoon of butter emulsion. And then we're going to do about a teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract. This was a paste, but either way, just about a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. It's me trying not to spill my half cup of milk, which is going to go in our mixture um, in a moment, as well as the peach, some of the peach juice. It's going to be a half cup of peach juice in this recipe as well. All right, so now we're just going to start spooning in our flour mixture. And you notice that I turned my mixer off while I pulled all those ingredients closer because, like I said, you don't want to overmix your batter um, at any point. So I just went in and added a few spoons of flour. I'm going to add in just a little bit of the milk. And you're just going to alternate that with your flour and milk. Once the milk is gone, then you'll be alternating it with the flour and the peach juice. So a couple spoons of flour. And then um, I put in the rest of the milk, so I did about half and half. And now I'm using that same measuring cup so that I can get a half cup of the peach juice. Don't worry, we will need more of that peach juice later, so make sure you put that to the side. Adding in our few spoons of flour again, and then we're going to alternate it now with the peach juice. We're still on our lowest setting here. I almost forgot which order I was in here. Okay, flour, then peach juice added in the rest so that I can end with flour. Why do we do that? I don't know, but you know, that's how we've always been taught as bakers to so begin and end with flour. All right, there's the rest of my flour into the bowl. I know it's only mixed for a few seconds, but I wanted to go ahead and take an opportunity to go ahead and scrape down my bowl at this point in time because a lot of flour is stuck on the sides and it's on the top of my paddle attachment. So I wanted to make sure all of that flour gets incorporated. Um, so I'm just taking an opportunity to scrape down the bowl. Getting it off the sides since I got it off the paddle attachment, mixing it in, and then I believe I'm also going to scrape down to the bottom of the bowl just to be sure. All right, get all that back in there, and then back on the mixer. Yeah, I turned up the speed um, instead of the lowest, I went up one, so I think that's like a two on a KitchenAid mixer. And I just had flour everywhere, so that's why you see me cleaning it off. That was just me scraping it off the sides of the bowl um, on the other side that you can't see and making sure it gets all in there. So that's that's about it on the mixing. You, like I said, you don't want to over mix. We already have the eggs in there. We already have the flour in there. So that is all. Our batter is done. Um, so I, off camera, I scraped off my paddle attachments to save some time. And as you can see, it leaves a very nice silky batter this is one of my silkiest batters to be honest 
We're going to put that to the side and get ready for assembly. So we bring back our peach mixture that we put at the bottom of our bunt pan. And now you want to add in about half of your batter at this point. You know me, I just put, it's such a thick batter, I put it in one spot and then get it for about a third of a turn so that I can get it all um, all in the pan. Um, I, don't, I hate for my batter to be on the middle thing or all on the sides, so I'm um, just being really careful just to get it all over the mixture. What's really important right at this point is that you get all of the peach mixture covered. So you don't want your peach mixture poking out and sticking out and showing. You want to make sure that that first layer um, gets completely covered with batter. So this is me spreading it around very lightly, spreading it around to flatten it out and make sure that it's um, covering all of the peach mixture. I believe I had a couple little pieces sticking out. So I just, you know, spooned in um, just a little bit more mixture to get, make sure it's covered. There you go. All right, so I'll put that to the side, and now you want to pull back out that brown sugar mixture that we made in, in the beginning, and then you just want to put um, dollops of the mixture all around uh, the cake um, section that we're in now. I want to make sure that you try to keep it in the middle. Um, I have noticed this particular mixture, if it gets on the sides, that it, I know it will poke through the cake and it'll sometimes get a little over brown, so try to keep it in the middle of the, of the batter mixture as much as possible. If you don't use it all, it's okay. I didn't use all of mine this time. And then you just want to get something to swirl it around. Just swirl it into the cake mixture. Oh no, a piece got on the side. I tried to get it. There we go. Got it. I probably should have added a little bit more on that other side over there. It looks like a little bit uneven, but I didn't, so... Moving on. All right, and then you're going to add in that other half a can of peaches. You're gonna go ahead and add that in. I use a spoon instead of dumping it in simply because one, I needed to make sure it landed in the right spots and gets evenly distributed. And two, there was just a little bit of juice at the bottom. You don't wanna add any juice um, at this point. So make sure that it's just the peaches, none of the remnant juice that's in there. And you see, I'm just spooning it in, making sure it's nice and even. Again, I'm trying to keep it in the center. One thing I really love about this cake is that it, it literally tastes just like peach cobbler. And I love peach cobbler, so this is one of my um, more favorite cakes. All right, got all our peaches in there, and now we're going to go just go ahead and put in the rest of our batter. And you all forgive me for putting the bowl all in the camera. I, I, I don't know how, how I did that, <laughs> but you get it. So let's get all of our batter in there. Um, make sure that you're just covering that whole middle section um, of, of that layer of peaches. Just want to make sure you get that all covered. And you know me, I just want to get the rest of this batter out of the bowl. I don't want to leave any behind. I'm not leaving it in the bowl. I'm not leaving it on the spoon. I want all my batter in the cake pan. Last little bit. Smoothing out my top just a little bit. Very lightly, make sure you're not pressing down. Just very lightly smoothing it out. And that little bit of batter on the spoon thought it was getting away. No, get in here. There you go.
All right, now we're just going to give it a couple of jiggles and a few taps on the counter to get rid of the air bubbles that may or may not be in there. And into a 325 degree oven. Honestly, it only baked for about 50 minutes before I checked it. So about 50 minutes and you want to start checking your cake. You know, every oven is different. While that's in the oven, we want to go ahead and get our glaze together, which is a stick of cream cheese two cups of powdered sugar. Um, we're gonna be using that peach juice that we had left aside uh, earlier from earlier. We're gonna be using that as well. And of course, some vanilla flavoring. Um, so I'm using my whisk attachment now. Right now it's just the cream cheese and the powdered sugar. Started out on low so that powdered sugar doesn't fly everywhere. And then we will gradually increase the speed. And I just like with my one of my last icings, I, I put the cream cheese on the bottom. I really should have put the brown sugar, I mean, the powdered sugar, sorry, in first and then the cream cheese on top. Probably would have helped from uh, keeping it from sticking to the bottom, but I didn't. Um, so here it is, just a drop of that caramel emulsion. Uh, you don't want to overpower the flavoring. And then we're going to add in some of our peach juice from that was reserved from earlier. So I'm just turning up the speed now since the, all the powdered sugar mostly is incorporated. And then here you just want to add peach juice until it gets to the consistency that you want it to be. Everybody's different in how they want to ice or glaze their cakes. Um, so, you know, just, you just add it in and keep checking until you get to your desired consistency, which is exactly what you'll see me doing. So I'm just letting that go for a bit on a higher um, speed. And now I'm just going to check the consistency to see where it is. I'm scraping down the sides and um, this is where I said I had my powdered sugar stuck to the bottom. So I'm making sure to get that all scraped in. Right now it is a bit thick. You can tell because it's not even barely sliding down the bowl there after I wipe my spoon off. So yeah, way too thick for me for right now. So I'm gonna put it back into the mixer back on and then I'm gonna add a little bit more peach juice. And of course you can use any kind of glaze that you'd like, whatever your favorite recipe is. I just love a cream cheese glaze. So uh, this is a cream cheese peach glaze. I added in more um, peach juice. You just couldn't see because I'm over on this far right side. I'm checking the consistency again. It's still a bit thick, so I'm going to put it back in and add a little bit more peach juice. Yeah, too thick. All right, so back in, a little bit more juice. And when I say a little bit, you're probably adding like a, you know, maybe a teaspoon to two, up to a tablespoon at a time. Um, here, since we're at the end of the process, I probably added in about a, another teaspoon and a half or so of the juice. No, it's probably about a tablespoon of the juice. All right, let's take a look. And yeah, see, that's way more pourable. Exactly how I want it. Perfect. All right, so then now I take it off of the mixer. Set it aside and uh, wait for our cake to bake. Yeah, 
was, I think there was something off of my caramel flavor. It didn't get mixed in, so I pulled it out. But this is the perfect glaze for me. It's loose yet thick, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, now our cake is done. Pulling it out of the oven, and it looks delicious. All right, so we're going to let that cool. I'm just um, testing it. Um, uh, a few crumbs on your cake tester is just fine. That's all I was trying to show you, but I couldn't really pick up the crumbs. I let it cool for about 15, 20 minutes. And now I'm just putting it on my cake plate. It's on a plastic plate because this is for a, um, a, a customer, a client. And the big reveal. Voila. Yes, there's a little bit of peach stuck in the bottom of the pan. It's okay. There's plenty left. So while it's still a little bit warm, um, I put a layer of glaze on. And then once it's completely cooled, I put another layer of glaze on. Um, and as you can see, I'm just using my spatula uh, to put it on, which is why I wanted the, a nice thick but pourable consistency. And there's no right or wrong way, of course, to get their glaze on the cake. And like I said, this is just the first one while it was still warm. Uh, when it cools off, I'm going to do the exact same thing for one more layer of glaze. And there it is. It's my peach cobbler pound cake. Enjoy, y'all.